Welcome back to chapter 16, Unwelcome Dinner Guests. Dunk, dunk, dunk. The noise was distant and low at first, but it rumbled menacingly off the dining room walls and made everybody stop what they were doing to listen. Dunk, dunk, dunk. What's that? asked Singri. It's probably just Nancy coming back with the mango chutney, Mum said. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Unless my ears were playing tricks on me, the sound was getting louder. It seemed to be coming from underneath our feet, like something was shuffling about on the floor. Dunk, dunk, dunk. There was an ear-shattering squeal as something nudged the chair backwards and away from the table, and everyone cried out in alarm. Dunk, dunk, dunk. The sound was different now. Softer, whatever it was, was down that was down there, had just hopped up onto the chair. Can you see what it is? Mum said, if it's Hoggett snaffling for scraps, there's going to be trouble. I walked to the edge of the table and nervously peered over, being careful to keep my balance. Far below on the wooden seat were three leathery brownish lumps. It had been, nor if I had been normal sized, they'd each be about the size of an apple. But right now, they were as big as hot air balloons. What can you see, Frankie? Dad called over to me. Anything? I was about to yell back to Dad and say I thought they were extra large minkle meatballs when the middle one opened its yellow eyes and glowered up at me. After ev after that, everything was a bit of a blur, if I'm honest. I barely had time to run back from the edge before dunk, dunk, dunk. I dived out of the way as the monstrous things bounced up onto the table with deafening booms. Scurrying back towards my family, I spun round to get a good look. I recognised all three of them instantly. They were the dis disgustrous bad luck charms we'd seen strung to Maudlin Maloney's belt. And now the shrunken heads, which were not so shrunken anymore, were very much alive and by the looks of things, ready to have a feast of their own. Everybody froze in terror. In our tiny state, the gruesome little lumps were colossal and towered above us. Blah! One of the heads groaned, lolling its black tongue out of its mouth and dragging it across its jagged teeth. Roar! The heads roared and all at once chaos broke out across the tabletop. This picture a bit bigger so you can see it. We've got Frankie and then one of the, some of the giant heads. Oh, remember they were shrunken and round the leprechaun's waist earlier on. Imagine seeing those rolling towards you. Run for it! Orphis howled as the head of with a ring through its nose bounced towards us with its mouth wide open. They're trying to eat us! Crash! The head landed on the edge of the trog hog platter, sending the boulder sized balls of sage and bunion stuffing bouncing high into the air. Go, go, go! Dad yelled, grabbing me by the arm and dragging me away as the shrunken head flopped out of its crusty tongue again. Get to higher ground! Ahead of me, I could see Mum and the Quinxes sprinting across the tablecloth as balls of um, stuffing came thundering down like dreadful savoury bombs. Oof, no like! Oof bawled as we passed him. He swung a breadstick like a club and knocked one of the gruesome heads over on its side. It was the super leathery one that Maudlin Maloney had introduced to us as her Aunt Influenza. For a second, I thought that our handy ogre might have just defeated it until the horrible thing wobbled upright and screamed in Oof's face, sending, sending a green cloud of rancid breath billowing out in front of it. Dad and I raced um, around an immense jug of a uh, grapple weed gravy, came face to face with the third horrible head, it had patch over one eye and the faded remains of a blue anchor tattooed on its chin, which meant that this dreadful thing had once been a squall groblin, just like Captain Calamitous Plank. Gah! It bellowed so loudly that the tabletop rumbled under our feet. Blah! Over here, Frankie! Dad yelled as he pulled me up onto the great hill of crab curd cofters. Get to the top! I scrambled as fast as I could, but the enormous fried blocks of food were greasy and it was difficult to grip the edges as I climbed. 
This way, grub, Unger called to me. She was a few levels higher on the stack of crispy snacks, and I could see she had already helped Mum, Orphis and Zingri up onto the pile. Whiffly now, as quickly as you can. She reached down and grabbed me by my jacket collar, then lifted me straight to the top of the crunchy peak. This is disastrous, Orphus howled as a plate of ice bumble wheat buns was upended and they crashed into the side of our food mountain like meteors. We're gonlies. From the top of the crab curd cofters, I could see the terrible scene unfolding all around me. It was like everything was moving in slow motion. I watched as the ugly blob with the ring through its nose cornered Reginald Blink and his family by the dish of rat tail terrine. With one foul slurp, it sucked them all straight off their feet and gobbled all four of them down at once. Aunt Influenza's head was now splashing about on the cauldron of crusty snot soup like some nightmarish tea bag. It was guzzling down mouthfuls of the green liquid, then spitting jets of it back out as guests ran past in a panic, sending them flying across the table. Ah! I turned just in time to see a pirate head blown an almighty guest of wind at Beryl Dunch, who had somehow shimmied up a drinking straw to escape the chaos. The geriatric mermaid spiralled into the air, flapping her fishtail this way and that. Then, as she started to fall back down, the tattooed head bounced up towards her and swallowed her whole with a ver reverberating gulp. It's not going well.